Hey everyone, uh, today we are in the CSRA race shop uh, getting ready for the 2024 race season and uh, catching up with Ken Van. When we want to introduce uh, a new class and obviously talk about uh, getting you know new racing enthusiasts into the sport. All right, Ken. Well, good to be here and uh, connect with you. Obviously, it's uh, you know it's exciting. Obviously, you're moving into yeah. the, the 30th year of uh, CSRA. How's that? How's that feel? It's awesome. It's, a, it's uh, lots of great, lots of great times and memories. And uh, yeah, 30 years have, have gone by pretty quick. But it's um, yeah, we're still plugging away, and we, we love what's going on with the, with the circuit. Uh, we really enjoy all the, the children and kids we have coming into the series, and it continues to be solid and continues to grow those grow those classes. You know, so awesome. In, in general, let's talk about snowcross racing because it's going to, going across all over the USA and Canada. If you want to get involved in the circuit here in Canada, obviously you'd come to CSRA Canadian Snowcross at snowcross.com is our website. Mm -hmm. um, if you're in the United States based, uh, you look at ISOC, ISOC Racing. And if you're in Quebec, um, there's an SCMX racing circuit there. So um, wherever you are in North America, there's a snowcross circuit that you can, you can get involved in if you're interested. Um, for a new racer to get involved, we have classes, uh, 18 classes of competition everywhere from 14 years of, of uh, four years of age as a, as a child. Mm -hmm. Um, all the way up to the uh, world-class pros. So there's 18 classes of competition all together. So um, uh, there's a spot for everybody. But to get involved to start with, you'd go to the uh, website of your, of your race circuit, um, become a member of that association. Mm -hmm. um, and that's gonna give you your uh, membership uh, and racer number. Um, so that if uh, you have a certain number you wanna use, you can sign up and they'll um, try to give you that number if they can, if it's not already taken by somebody. So I guess for our new, our new uh, enthusiasts getting into it as well, um, how do they go about finding a snowmobile? You know, I guess let's start off with, uh, you know, a beginner class, let's say. So for the kids that are racing at four years of age, and those kids, the four, five, and six-year-old kids are racing on a 120cc uh, box stock snowmobile that you can buy at any snowmobile dealership, Polaris, Articat, Yamaha, Skidoo, they all make a 120cc a snowmobile similar to the machine we have behind us here. Uh, this is actually a 200. Um, and the older kids, uh, aged basically uh, 6 to 12, can ride on a little 200cc sled, the next, next size up. But uh, those sleds are all available at the uh, snowmobile dealerships. They have to stay stocked. There's a few, a few things you can change on them. Uh, the handlebars, you can, you can change the shape of the handlebar. Um, some guys ha have risers on them and that type of thing. As long as that's the part that's available from the manufacturer, you can't, you can't cut them and weld your own handlebar up. Um, so you can adjust handlebars in that sense. You can also um, adjust uh, or change shock absorbers. Mm -hmm. If you if, say it's a heavier kid and you want to go to a better shock, you can, you can do that. The shock has to remain the same length. You can't, you can't go to a longer length. It has to be the same spec as far as length goes, but you can go to a better quality shock. The other thing you can change is, uh, is the skis. You can go from the stock steel ski to a, like a CNA uh, Pro uh, plastic ski. They have those for the um, or composite ski. They have those for the kids' sleds as well. It's a bit, it's a bit of a higher quality ski, and it's got the nice uh, ski loop on the front that it meets all our safety standards. So, awesome. That's some options. But that's what really all they can do to the sled. Other than that. Okay. So, so now that we've kind of got you know the the once you've got the sled prepped, or pretty much like you said, it's bone stock. Um, you know, we've got some safety gear here. Um, you know, talk to me a little bit about some of the required. I guess you know we, we yeah for that, so, so. The, the safety gear is important for the kids Num uh, safety is number one priority on our circuit uh, we want to keep the kids safe we want to keep the adults safe we want to keep everybody on uh, you know encompassed in the series uh, safe as possible so that's got to be the number one priority all the racers have to wear a tech vest this is a small one um, uh, what, I, what a child would wear mm -hmm. um, a motocross type vest isn't 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 any good because they don't protect, uh, they don't come down the, your back far enough to protect your entire spine and your okay. tailbone, where these do. These also, when, they, when they're connected together, they wrap right around your, your uh, rib cage, so the, all your ribs are protected as well. And then it's got the shoulder pads up top that also um, protect your shoulder blade and everything else. So the only vest um, that you can use during, in snowcross racing, doesn't matter what the race circuit is, it's an international rule. Is this type of a, this type of a vest? Like a, gotcha. So we suggest tech vest and okay. So if I if I race like ice soccer or something, it's the all the same. same. Rule, yeah. Yeah, all, all the rules for snowcross racing are international in scope mm -hmm. um, through ISR. So whether you're racing in Quebec, in Ontario, uh, Michigan, Minneapolis, Minnesota, whatever, um, the rules are all the same. Gotcha. Okay. But um, so the tech vest is one item that the kids have to have. You can get those at Royal Distributing or right directly through Tech Rider. 
um, or your local snowmobile dealer would have, a lot of them will have that, the safety gear as well. Another thing they need to use is, um, is just a hockey type shin pad. This is actually a Fox motocross pad that the motocross kids would use. Same thing, it's for a tiny little guy, like maybe a four or a six year old. Okay. But it, it just helps them if they bump their knees on the sled while they're enduring competition or if another kid runs into them, it helps mm. give their leg a little bit of protection. And then the most important thing is, is the helmet. Um, you wanna, you can't cheap out on the helmet. You wanna have a good quality helmet on the, on the child. Um, so for snowcross racing, the helmet has to have a safety certification. Okay. So this helmet we have here um, is a 60 FXR helmet. This is top of the line. This is about as good as you're going to get. The, the, the pro motocross riders, the pro snowmobile racers, um, will all wear uh, like a, a 6D type helmet like this. Okay. Or FXR has other helmets, but they they have to have the safety certification label on the back of them. Gotcha. Okay. Because um, I so over the years as 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 a racer myself, as others, I've seen different certifications. So I guess it maybe just help me kind of understand that there's yeah. a difference between DOT and Snell approval, and how does that you know qualify a racer yeah. for the So the right? DOT DOT is basically Department of Transportation. It's not. It doesn't necessarily mean it's a, a great quality helmet. It's just a helmet that has passed some kind of a certification. Okay. When you start getting into the higher performance machines and, and racing, uh, you want to have the, uh, a, a good quality helmet. So they have to meet a higher safety standard than DOT. So there's a, there's a Snell, a Snell approval, which is uh, um, an American um, safety standard. So can, for racing, it would need to be a Snell 2020 or newer. It'll say that right on, the, uh, right on the back of the helmet. And is the 2020, is that a manufactured date or is that yes. just happens to That's be That's an enough? approval date. The approval date, okay. So it would be a late model helmet. Um, once helmets have reached five years of age, they need to be replaced. Okay. Because the composite material will get, will get brittle um, from, with age, just like anything else does. Yep. So um, they want the helmet to be a fairly new helmet, five years or newer. Okay. Um, the other safety standard that can be on it is ECE 22.05. Okay. That's in a European, a European um, safety standard. That's the, that's the most uh, stringent safety standards that there are for gotcha. helmets. Okay. So we encourage the parents buying helmets for the kids. Look for that safety standard um, because if you just show up with just a DOT helmet, it's not going to be approved to race. You get the four one from somebody else. Gotcha. Okay. Um, and then also too, I noticed um, in previous racing experience that we had you know orange on our helmets and stuff like that. Now we've got orange on our tax vest now. Yes. Maybe um, tell me a little bit about. Uh, so in that. the in so. the past, the orange helmet rule came from uh, oval racing on high speed oval circuits with when there was lots of in cold temperature snow dust that type of thing. So they wanted everybody to wear a bright orange so you could see even in the snow dust, just like our safety standards for the road crews you see in the roads and highways and that type of thing. Um, they've relieved that, um, that standard for helmets. It does not have to be orange anymore for a helmet. Okay. Um, but we encourage people to use a helmet that has either a high-vis color on it, like yellow or, the, or this green color or, or orange. Um, but now there's just a lot more options. It kind of suits all the different brands better if there's a few more color opportunities. Okay, for race apparel, <clears throat> for when you're going racing on the snow cross track, um, the kids are obviously going to wear basically uh, something that's nice and warm, keep them comfortable. They're not, they're not that physical, uh, physically active on the sled at, at when they're you know four years of age or six years of age. So they're going to wear a, this is an adult suit, but they're going to wear basically a regular uh, type of snowmobile jacket that is warm and keep the kids warm. When you get into the upper levels, the full size sleds and the, uh, the pros, where they're getting very physical on the sled and getting a lot of body temperature, um, they're gonna go to more of a, more like a shell, a very thin lined snowmobile uh, jacket shell. These are available from FXR and some of the other uh, manufacturers. A lot of the guys who are using the FXR gear, um, they make a lot of specialized racing product. But this is very thin, so obviously it's not that warm. Um, but when the races are running around the pit area, prior to racing, they want to be, the body temperature should be cool so that when they hop on their sled, temperature's going to come up to what, what they want, where they're comfortable while they're racing. It's very, it's very physical, very much like uh, motorcycle motocross racing. So the body temperature is going to rise as they're competing. Um, when they come off, they still have the shell on, obviously. So they're going to go to, um, the pit crew is going to grab them a, a pit coat, something like this. And they'll hand that to the racer as soon as he comes off the track, he's going to be all sweaty and, and hot. Like these are the pro level riders. They throw the pit coat on, which is a full, a full length, um, heavy warm jacket. So they'll wear this, something like this, when they're um, running around the pit area prior to racing. They'll drop the coat, have this on underneath, and just hop on the sled. When they come off the sled, same thing. They get this handed to them. They're totally comfortable. These things are, these jackets are amazing. 
Most of the crew members will also wear uh, a pit coat on the really cold days. It can be minus 30, minus 40, whatever. Um, you're warm when you're wearing something like this. It just goes over top of all of your regular apparel. If you're wearing a, wearing a snowmobile jacket already, that goes on top of, over everything. So that's basically what the, you're gonna wear uh, when you're racing. Um, keep in mind, these are all orange because of the orange rule. We want um, the orange on the sleds or on the upper body for, um, for safety. For the adults, they have to have 144 square inches front and back. And the kids should also have some orange on their, uh, on their, on their uh, jackets. If they don't have it um, enough, the tech vest will cover um, the orange rule for exposure of orange. And you can, this can also be worn over top of your jacket. So that's basically it for your, uh, for your race apparel. Once the racers kind of obviously has the proper gear and everything too, I guess, what are the, the next steps for them as well? Well, so the next steps, um, when they're gonna, uh, they've got all the gear now, they've got the machine, they found the sled. Um, so now it's time to get to the, you know, get some practice. If you can get a, find somebody who's got a practice track, or if you come to the races, we always have a practice day. Uh, moving forward, we have practice on Fridays or, or Saturday morning. So you get the more practice time the kids can get, or the adults can get, the better. It's just it's good to get used to the, the actual great layout of the particular track each each race weekend. So if you can get there for the Friday and get practice for the for the brand new racers that are there for the first time. It's great for them to come a bit early, so then they get to um, see the layout of, of what's going on with the, the race site grounds, um, get the sled safety inspected at the tech inspection area. Just little things like that. Um, as far as uh, a sled like these, these new sleds that we have behind us, like a 200cc or a 120, they come basically from the dealer ready to roll to reach the racetrack. They've got a te you have to have a telecord kill switch, they, they have that. Mm. You have to have a thumb activated uh, shut off switch, they have that as well. Mm. Um, and the standards for, for skis and everything else are already in place. So they're all, that sled can come from the dealership. Mm. To the starting line as it is gotcha okay um, with and the exception of adding graphics for the race number on it and that type of thing gotcha okay and then now once uh, for a beginner rider as well obviously we really want to make sure that we help you know the beginners feel comfortable joining the series as right. well too and i guess what are the key takeaways i guess in the csra circuit and how do we make sure those riders are you know welcomed and we can help them you know develop the skill set and move up the ranks in different classes well like i said we, we have 18 classes and you're starting at the smaller classes and working your way up as your skills develop and as you, as you get older but um, the great thing with our circuit and most snowcross circuits are the, are the people that are already involved each like at our events you'll have five to seven hundred individuals um, that are affiliated with either either being a racer or a race crew member mm -hmm. so um, those people are all interested in helping you out so if you're a new racer you can show up and all you have to do is ask you can ask the CSRA officials or you can ask the uh, the racers or the crew members they all want it they'll all take time to help you they want you to be involved and um, they're all really good people um, so um, in addition to that, um, each of the manufacturers has a racing department and you can connect to those racing departments once you get into the higher classes and you can get the latest and greatest information from, from them directly if you're a member of one of the racing organizations or circuits. So you've got lots of opportunity to, um, to learn from the website as well. If you go to your circuit's website, uh, for CSRA you go to newsletter number one, you go to racer info, you'll have a down drop to newsletter number one. That newsletter has all the basic info to get you started as well. Well, this, this is a bone stock sled. It's, it's, it's very similar to the, um, the Articat brand and the Yamaha. They're pretty much all the same sled, the same horsepower, everything. Um, they come basically right from the dealership uh, and set up that you could actually race them right, right from the store. Um, they have everything that we need for racing. They have a telecord kill switch, so if the kid falls off, it'll, it'll kill the motor on the, on the sled. Um, it also has a thumb activated switch that they have to have to turn the engine off if we need to for a situation. Okay. Um, it meets all the other standards as far as the skis are good, but you can also, uh, you can change the skis on these. The mm -hmm. side has to stay stock with the exception of we can adjust the handlebars, um, we can change the shocks as long as they don't exceed the OEM stock length. Okay. But if you want to go to a Fox shock or a better shock, you could do that. You don't need to, but they could. Mm -hmm. uh, the skis can be changed out to CNA Pro skis instead of the stock uh, OEM skis. But other than that, this thing's pretty much ready to, ready to go racing, um, with the exception of it needs to have the graphics applied to it for the racer numbers. Okay. Um, uh, and, that's, and then also the uh, series sponsor decals, which you'll see Tenzoral, um, Ultimax belts, the CSRA on there as well, and but, you know, Sunoco Race Fields is also okay. another one. But okay. basically um, we have all the uh, series 
primary sponsors on all the race sleds for the whole series. Gotcha. Um, you mentioned Sunoco Race Fuel. Um, what do you recommend for uh, beginner racers to put in their 200s? So for the uh, for the novice kids on the 120s and the novice 200 classes, for the small sleds, um, the racers have to use a, um, a, a 91 octane fuel that is available from a gas station. So we we would recommend Shell 91. It's a great it's a great fuel to use for um, for anything, but really works well on these sleds. It's a high quality fuel, um, and uh, yeah. So yes, you know, uh, basically a 91 octane pump pump fuel. You cannot mm -hmm. put anything into it. No additives. Okay. These are all four strokes. These okay. little sleds, so you don't add oil into them or anything. Just straight up, straight up 91 octane fuel from the gas station. Perfect. We don't allow um, the parents to add additives, performance enhancing things such as ethanol or alcohol or alcohol or other uh, things that may provide more horsepower because some of them are carcinogenic. Um, but the primary reason, uh, other than that, is we want the sleds to all be competitive and, and the same basic speed, so that we're, kids, kids can just go out there and have fun. So we want to we want them to stay uh, the same the same horsepower. Gotcha. Um, okay. Is there is there a limit? I know we've done that in the past with the 120 classes that we've actually put a like a radar test and everything. Yeah. So that's so how that's we that's how we tack the 120 sleds. They're speed limited. The, the stock one, 120 class, the stock one class is 15 miles an hour and the stock two class is 18 miles an hour. Some of the parents can uh, adjust a few things, the track can be a bit looser. As the sled gets older, it gets a little bit looser and freer, so it gets to be a bit quicker. But if the sleds uh, exceed that speed, um, there's probably been something done to it. We'll just uh, radar them on the track. If they're going faster than the speed allocated for that class, we'll, dis we'll disqualify the, the, the kid. Mm -hmm. And the last thing we want to do is disqualify anybody, but we have you know 50 or 60 kids in some of these classes, and we have to keep it fair for all of them. Mm -hmm. So the kids that are doing, doing the right thing, they should be in their proper position. So if someone's dad's uh, cranked it up a little bit and he shouldn't, yeah, and dad doesn't tell mom, doesn't tell the kid, unfortunately the, the kid takes the hit, we have to disqualify him. And then dad walks around uh, kind of sad a little bit. But <laughs> we get it all sorted out. We just try to keep it um, competitive and, and fair for everybody. So it has to be tough. For, um, for this particular new class that we're starting with these 200s this year, for the beginner 200 class, it's for first time racers okay. that have never raced before, or for racers that have some experience but have never won a medal and never been on a podium before, we'll allow those kids into this class as well. Um, so this sled comes right from the dealership, you bring it to the track, you like a number will go on it, um, we'll put a little bit of padding on the bumpers just in case one kid runs into another one, and that's all you really have to do to the sled to, to, to go racing. So. That's a great machine for, uh, for, for the kids to run around the, at home with. Um, the sled's actually trail legal, legal when the kid's of age. Um, and when a parent buys a sled like this, they really hold a value. Um, probably three or four years after using it, they're gonna get the same money for the sled, basically. Awesome. So. Well, I mean, it's great to see, obviously, getting uh, you know more uh, more racers into into the series, and yes. uh, you know it's, it's yeah. really exciting to see that too. So, you know, very easy turnkey, pretty much. So, yeah, uh, that's that's exciting. And this is designed for kids from uh, approximately six years of age to twelve. Nice. Um, the kids that are younger than that, we start racing at four. They'd be on the uh, very similar mini snowmobile, but they'd be only a 120 cc, but but slower. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, they'd run those sleds. This sled, this sled, when it's running good on, on a hard pack type snow, it'll probably do 28 miles an hour, okay. maybe 30. Mm -hmm. um, so when, when they're racing, we'll be we'll be um, we'll have a stock version of a sled on site of the track. We'll find out what the speed is. Um, for that particular sled, and that will be the limit. So if, okay. a, if, a, if a sled, one of the racer sleds exceeds that speed, most likely there's something done to the sled and it's not legal. So we, they'll get disqualified for that yeah. one race and then they'll have to get the thing sorted out before the race again. That's right. Okay, and then so. um, maybe just jump up. So as obviously you know, you uh, get entered yeah. into the race, and you know, you gain more experience, um, yeah. and, and as you elevate into the different classes, let's say you know, uh, once you get into say Trail Sport 600 and go from there, um, right. You know, talk to me a little bit about what modifications you know a full size uh, okay. stomp you can do to a full size. Well, sled. well, what happens after the kids leave, uh, get, uh, leave this this classification? They're then going to a transition class. And the transition classes, basically what they are, is a full-on race sled that's been detuned to 6,000 RPM. And that's just detuned by uh, adjusting the ECM. And that can be done by the racing departments. So when the kid gets to be 12, 13, 14 years of age, they then, they then advance to a full-size sled that'll be um, reduced in speed by adjusting the computer. Um, that sled still has to be a box stock sled. There's not much you can do to it. The same thing, you can adjust handlebars, shocks, and skis. That's it. Okay. Are they allowed Race to stud number. or do different carbides? And yeah, stuff? when you get into the full-size sleds, not the not the kids' classes, 
but the uh, the adult classes like trail sport sport uh, pro light and pro mm -hmm. those guys can all use traction products yes but the lower horsepower when the sled is detuned to 60 horsepower you really don't need that uh, that's those studs to get you out of the hole quicker and that type of thing they're always handy for for braking and that type of thing but the speeds are relatively slow for the um, for the kids classes because of the detuned engines right. Um, in those particular sleds, all the full-size sleds will use uh, Sunoco Surge race fuel or uh, whatever the race circuit is, they may use a different fuel um, that, is, that is a spec for that race class. So these sleds have all been designed to race on, uh, the, the full-size sleds have been designed to race um, through the racing departments uh, and tested on like a 105 octane fuel that is, uh, for the past few years, it's been uh, Sunoco Surge. So that can be purchased at um, distributors for race fuel or from Royal Distributing and some of the dealers also sell it. But that's what that's the fuel they would use and they have to use that specific fuel so everybody has basically the same horsepower. Okay. Awesome. So, um, so, and then finally as you reach kind of the top upper classes, uh, is there any other performance upgrades that maybe uh, some racers can do to their snowmobile? Yeah, when you reach the Pro Light, uh, which is the class between Sport and Pro, um, they allow them then to go to an aftermarket exhaust uh, silencer system. So a lot of the guys will use the uh, MBRP system or, or something from one of the other aftermarket companies that provides a bit, a bit more horsepower for the sled and then the sled is a bit louder. Mm -hmm. The spectators like the noise and it just, just allows the engine to breathe a little bit better and um, so they are a bit more, uh, a bit of a higher performance sled than, uh, than the box stock engine. The rest mm -hmm. of the engine has to stay stock. Okay. The way it comes from the manufacturers. Each of the manufacturers, uh, Polaris, Skidoo and Articat, all build a limited number of uh, limited build race sleds. They're mm -hmm. designed to go on the snowcross course. Mm -hmm. um, so those sleds are the ones that uh, you'll see the pro and pro light racers on. They'll use them for one year, mm -hmm. and then those sleds will be sold, and then the kids will get those sleds uh, the following year with a detune kit on it. So it's a, it's a good transition for, to get, for the pros to move their sleds, and then it gives the, gives the kids an opportunity to buy uh, an inexpensive sled in the sense that the pros are dumping those out for 75, 85, 100 bucks. Mm -hmm. And that sled will last the kid for five years, no mm -hmm. problem, with nothing breaking. You're not gonna, a child isn't gonna hurt those things. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a great um, path for moving the sleds down, down to the kids and allows them to stay, get involved in racing on a real race sled, but just a little bit less horsepower. They're about 60 horsepower where uh, a true pro sled would be probably one, 125 to 140 in that range there for a 600 cc sled. CC sled. All of the uh, full size sleds on snow, in snowcross racing are 600 cc. Okay. Uh, you can't you can't show up with an 850. Um, unfortunately, they won't. Uh, there's a limit for. And it's for safety reasons because um, the sleds are so fast now and the suspension systems are so good that the lap times and uh, with the jumps that these guys are doing it's like, very much like a motocross bike. Mm -hmm. So we've they've limited the. Um, uh, horsepower by limiting the cc's gotcha. um, but it's very competitive racing as yeah. you know so yeah no, i mean it's it's exciting to see the sport grow and obviously kind of really making it easier that barrier to entry obviously easier for for, for sure newcomers too so yeah um, but the other yeah, thing it does here is it keeps it what was happening in, in the pro level and it happens in every every pro level of racing where you get you get the guys with the big money that can modify and get into carbon fiber and all kinds of engine mods you get into a a crazy dollar machine like 60, 70, 80, 100 thousand dollar piece that the average competitor cannot compete mm -hmm. against. So we've changed the rules for even our pro classes where they're using basically a production engine, production sled um, that everybody can get their hands on mm -hmm. and you can't do anything to it with, with the exception of minor changes. Mm -hmm. So it keeps the, it keeps the racing competitive and it keeps the cost of racing down. Mm -hmm. And that's how we've had the longevity of even with the CSRA for 30 years now, and mm -hmm. it's still going solid. So it's a, it's a, great, it's a great combination of, of um, basically intelligence from all the racing circuits working together to create something that allows the sport to last. Because you've seen the other types of racing, like the, the snowmobile, twin trackers, noble racing, all, all go away because the cost just got too much and the average person couldn't afford it. Mm -hmm. Same thing with drag racing and some of these other uh, smaller types of racing. Mm -hmm. Where uh, you know snow crosses excel because it relates to what sells to the public, and anybody can do it. Mm -hmm. No, oh, makes it yeah, it's it's super exciting. I mean, it's nice, like I said, nice to see the sport grow and hopefully continue right. with these new classes too. So, I mean, uh, I think in closing, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, if you guys want to find out more information, go to snowcross.com, and hopefully we'll see you at the track.